Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos um, on, on uh, this uh, current uh, video um, I'm going to give you uh, my reaction uh, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference uh, building up to the Manchester City Manchester United game uh, tomorrow half past five uh, kickoff um, at the Etihad uh, Stadium and he has said uh, quite um, a few um, interesting stuff um, in his uh, press conference uh, the press conference uh, was around uh, seven minutes uh, long um, he has uh, provided us uh, with some uh, news uh, regarding Anthony Martial and um, Paul Popper. Um, he has uh, confirmed that Anthony Martial uh, should be um, involved um, in the game, so he should be uh, playing parts in the game. But he is uh, sceptical um, about um, Anthony Martial starting, so he's not uh, too uh, sure um, about that. Uh, don't forget, um, Anthony Martial sustained um, a muscular problem uh, last week um, in the 2 2 draw um, against uh, Maston Villa. So, due to this, um, Anthony Martial uh, missed uh, the game um, against uh, Tottenham um, on Wednesday night. But Solskjaer did uh, confirm uh, that it is um, a slight um, injury um, he's got. So, obviously, no, um, it isn't uh, too uh, severe. But he did confirm uh, that Anthony Martial uh, will be um, out uh, for um, a little while. So, obviously, uh, Mason Greenwood um, had fulfilled Anthony Martial's role um, on Wednesday um, against uh, Tottenham and that. Uh, but, like I said, you know, Anthony Martial um, is a very um, imperative player. Um, obviously, now um, he's into his uh, fifth season um, as a Manchester United player. And don't forget, you know, um, he was um, out uh, with a hamstring problem um, earlier on um, in the season so he'd missed um, a couple of uh, months uh, due to that um, hamstring uh, problem um, he had. But Martial um, I think has played around 12 games this season. Um, he has um, scored what 53 goals in 186 appearances in all competitions since his arrival from Monaco uh, back in uh, 2015. Um, but um, yeah, and I think he's done uh, very, very well. Um, obviously, we do know for the vast majority of his Man United career, um, he has uh, played um, out wide because that's it, that's actually um, his predominant position. But he got confirmed um, at the start of this season that Martial um, has been uh, given uh, that number nine shirt. So he's, obviously, in the games he's played in this season, he's been playing centrally because he does seem to be uh, more um, effective um, in that uh, central position. By the way, now Martial is 24. As you all know, um, it was um, his birthday uh, yesterday. So he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development in him. But we did get uh, Anthony Martial at um, uh, just uh, the age um, of 19. And this was, of course, uh, back um, under the uh, Louis van Gaal um, era. Uh, but there was reports a day or so ago, was it a couple of days ago, I updated John, saying that actually Anthony Martial uh, was um, a doubt uh, for uh, the game um, against Man City. So the good news is um, it's very, very probable he will be involved but may not start the game. And Solskjaer's confirmed uh, that Paul Pogba is out. So he will not be uh, playing um, against against uh, Man City in that. Um, obviously, you know, Paul Pogba um, has had um, an ongoing ankle injury uh, for a matter um, of months. Um, like I said, um, Paul Pogba um, hasn't uh, played uh, since uh, September. So the last uh, league game um, he did uh, play uh, was uh, the 1-1 draw uh, with Arsenal earlier on um, in the season. Um, I know there was reports emerging out uh, last week, you know, saying that Paul Pogba you know, could have played um, against uh, Tottenham. But unfortunately, no, um, he didn't. Um, because, and unfortunately, you know, he didn't get uh, that reunion uh, with Jose Mourinho. Because Solskjaer did confirm prior to the Villa game that Paul Pogba you know, was stepping up um, his recovery in that um, so I don't think he's you know far away now uh, from you know uh, returning uh, from injury don't forget Solskjaer recently uh, defended it, defended his professionalism you know uh, Paul Popper's uh, professionalism and he did say you know when he does uh, come back uh, from injury um, it will be like um, a, world, a new world class signing uh, because we do know the difference uh, Paul Popper uh, does uh, make um, in that midfield uh, but you know due to his uh, absentee you know Fred um, has been full full in his role and to be fair I think Fred, you know, um, has done uh, quite uh, well uh, recently. Um, I think he has blended in um, alongside um, at Tom Wayne, our midfield, uh, very, very um, well. Um, but it will be fantastic, you know, when Paul Popper uh, does uh, come back. So hopefully, you know, Paul Popper should be back for the Altmar game or uh, should be uh, back uh, for uh, the Everton game. Um, I do presume anywhere that Paul Popper still uh, wants to uh, leave uh, the football club. Um, you know, like he did do uh, for the entirety um, of the summer transfer window. Uh, Taking into account his preference uh, was a um, move to Real Madrid uh, during the summer. And I think now he's got uh, the same preference and I think he's orchestrating on making a move uh, to uh, Real Madrid uh, next year. But regardless of whether Paul Popper stays um, or goes anywhere, you know, we still uh, need to um, address uh, that uh, midfield. So Paul Popper will not be uh, playing them um, against Man City. Um, obviously, you know, we've 
got players coming back from injury, and you know, obviously we've still got a Bay out of injury. Um, you know, Delos still out. I don't think he's expected to play for another couple of weeks. Uh, Fossil Mensu, uh, Matty just still out with a minor problem, but it has um, all confirmed uh, that they are uh, back um, in training. And that uh, recent players who have returned from injury um, is obviously you no know, Scott McTominay. Um, um, before the Tottenham game, he had missed uh, the last three games uh, due to um, an ankle injury, but he did uh, play um, against uh, Tottenham, and I did say uh, the return of um, Tom Way uh, was very beneficial uh, because you know he has been a um, revelation this season, and he has uh, deserved uh, to keep um, his place um, in the team and that, but I still don't know if he's uh, the long-term uh, solution for Man United, and I still don't know if he can emulate um, into um, a world-class uh, midfielder, but um, he was out of an ankle injury, but now obviously you now um, he is uh, back um, in the team which is good because obviously you know when you know Matomwe was absent you know we had to you know go over midfield um, of Andres Pereira um, and Fred and obviously you know we knew uh, that wasn't uh, really uh, working out and that and you know a lot of Manchester United fans uh, now uh, do believe uh, that Andres Pereira um, is finished um, at the football club and probably believe anyway you know he isn't good enough uh, to you know you know to um you know, represent uh, the football club and that. So maybe it would be beneficial if we did uh, move uh, Andres uh, Pereira on. But I thought that Tom Way was fantastic on Wednesday night against Tottenham. You know, Solskjaer's confirmed now that Tom Way is undroppable. And I think that Tom Way himself, uh, Tom Way himself loves uh, playing um, under uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer and that. Um, don't forget also too recently uh, Luke Shaw uh, returned from injury uh, since he's uh, returned uh, from that initial hamstring injury he had. You know, Luke Shaw has made two substitute appearances in the Premier League and he's also, uh, you know, he played the full 90 minutes against FC Astana last Thursday and uh, so too to Anzebe. He recently, you know, where recovered uh, from um, a hip injury and that. So, you know, players um, are coming back from injury, you know, which is obviously, you know, very, very um, good uh, news. Uh, but Solskjaer, a few of the other things um, he did mention uh, during uh, the press conference I want to take into account. Um, he obviously is aware that uh, Man City um, are obviously you know, one of the best uh, teams um, in England. He says obviously you know, Manchester derbies um, are always special. Uh, this is currently um, the 179th uh, Manchester derby. Uh, like I did confirm to you guys um, on my initial uh, preview uh, that I did uh, yesterday. But you know... Solskjaer, you know, uh, was very, very uh, pleased uh, with the result um, against uh, Tottenham. Um, you know, it was a surprise. You know, I didn't um, expect it, you know, to uh, get um, anything uh, from Tottenham. You know, because obviously, you know, since uh, they recommended Jose Mourinho win, you know, uh, you know, they've definitely now uh, rejuvenated uh, themselves. So I didn't expect us to get um, anything uh, from Tottenham. And I think, you know, if we hadn't won against Tottenham, if, you know, if we'd have drawn or if we'd have lost, then I think, you know, you could say Solskjaer uh, would have uh, been uh, sat uh, by next week because obviously reports emerged out before the game allegedly saying that Solskjaer had told um, our players that, you know, he would be sat if we did lose to Tottenham on Wednesday and if we lose uh, to Manchester City, um, of course, uh, tomorrow. So I think with that now, it's, you know, changed a lot, you know, with Solskjaer. I think, you know, we'll probably keep, I think he'll still be here in January, uh, could still be here um, at the end um, of the season and that. Um, but um yeah, but it was a very very um good uh, performance um against uh, Tottenham. That you know Solskjaer believes it's one of you know uh, the best uh, performances um of the season so far. Um you know he obviously you know praised uh, Marcus Rashford. He mentioned Rashford you know during his press conference as well uh, today. You know um he knows that obviously you know Rashford um is flourishing. He's you know obviously becoming more and more prolific. Um obviously now Rashford is in scintillating form. He scored what uh, nine goals in his last ten games for United in all competitions. And he's been directly directly involved in eleven um, his uh, last uh, ten games, and I think his record um, against uh, the top six sides um, is very very um, good. But yeah, definitely I think Rashford will be playing um, against uh, Man City because obviously he's a consistent starter. Don't forget, reflecting back quite a few years ago, Rashford did score against Man City. Um, it was his actually scored in his first ever Manchester derby. Uh, did Marcus Rashford, you know, um, but very very good player. Um, I know I criticised him earlier on in the season that you know because he wasn't performing to the standards um, as we should um, expect of him but um, he's been in absolutely uh, fantastic form but Rashford uh, scored uh, two um, of our uh, goals um, against uh, Tottenham but I thought everyone put a really good shift in um, against Tottenham I don't think uh, you know there was one bad individual performance I think we created a lot of chances in the game um, 
you know, I think Rashford should have had at least a hat-trick because he also hit the crossbar. You know, Greenwood had a chance in the first half. He should have scored. Um, you know, Lingard had some chances, I think, recently, to be fair. Jesse Lingard um, has a rejuvenated um, himself. Daniel James had a couple of chances in the second half against Tottenham, so he, you know, could have um, had um, a couple of uh, games. But Oli is aware, you know, if we can, you know, replicate this replicate the performance tomorrow against Man City than what we did do um, against Tottenham then Solskjaer I believe you know we've got um, every chance um, of beating uh, Man City but you know Solskjaer is aware of how you know cons of how you know consistent Man City are he's also aware of how consistent the likes of Leicester and uh, Liverpool um, are and you know Take into account, you know, even though we've enjoyed um, our worst start to a Premier League season, you know, for uh, 30 uh, years, you know, we've still had some positive uh, results uh, this season. And I think, you know, we seem to do well against elite opposition for some reason because, you know, we beat Chelsea 4 0 at the beginning um, of this season, you know. Um, you know, we beat Leicester at home 1 0, even though we was really, really poor against Leicester. You know, we still uh, managed uh, to beat them. You know, we drew with Liverpool. Um, you know, that was also um, a very, very um, good uh, result. You know, we're the only team uh, this season uh, to uh, take uh, many uh, points uh, from Liverpool. Um, but I think, you know, we've had some uh, pretty uh, decent uh, games uh, this season. Solskjaer, you know, um, is aware, you know, that we've obviously, you know, drawn too many games this season. And you could arguably say, you know, some of the games uh, we have drawn, you know, that maybe, you know, where we should have won. You know, we've also lost four games uh, so far this season. But, you know, we are 15 games um, into the Premier League season. You know, we've won five, you know, we've registered, what, 15 point, uh, eight, 21 points, sorry, uh, from 15 games. We're six in the league. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we still uh, remain uh, eight points uh, behind uh, top four. And like uh, put into the equation, I'm very, very sceptical um, about us getting that top four uh, this season. Um, I don't see uh, that um, happening, but um, I won't uh, fully uh, dis uh, regard it. But I did initially say um, at the start um, of this season that our expectations this season anywhere will be to finish in that top four. So obviously, you know, we can get Champions League football because, you know, Champions League football is very, very essential because when you're in Champions League football, you've got a much, much better chance of attracting uh, players uh, to the um, elite uh, level. But I think, you know, we are good enough uh, to win the Europa League, you know, because we did it a couple of years ago um, under the uh, Jose uh, Mourinho um, era. Um, so we are uh, good enough uh, to win uh, the Europa League and that and, you know, take into account... Um, we are into the knockout uh, stages um, of the Europa League. You know, we've still uh, one game uh, remaining in that. So, honestly, I'm convinced, you know, that we can still uh, win uh, some silverware uh, this season. Um, uh, but, um, yeah. But, yeah, like I said, it's um, going to be a very, very difficult game um, against Man City. Um, you know, um, they're a very, very good team. You know, they're a very, very good team. You know, they've got um, a lot of uh, Galactico players of Man City. Um, but it's going to be a um, very, very um, difficult uh, game. Um, obviously, last season, uh, City did beat us um, at the Etihad 3-1. Um, obviously, you know, we lost uh, the home game 2-0 uh, last season. So, last season, uh, Man City uh, did uh, the double over us. Um, obviously, you know, City, that, from a City perspective, you know, they know it's a must-win game for them. Obviously, you know, uh, because, you know, they're sitting third in the league at the moment. You know, they are 11 points uh, behind uh, Liverpool. Um, I'm very sceptical, by the way, that Man City um, are going to win uh, the league uh, this season. Um, I don't think, you know, uh, that's uh, going to um, happen. Like I said, City in total um, have won uh, four uh, Premier Leagues. You know, they've won back-to-back -back titles. You know, they're looking to win uh, their third title um, on the trot. Like I said, if they were to win the league this season, it would be their third title on the trot. And, you know, um, you know... They'd be the first team to do that, you know, since, you know, when we did it back in 2007, 2008 um, and uh, 2009. You know, also, don't forget, City did win the English uh, domestic uh, treble uh, last season and that. But, you know, City have spent um, a hell of a lot of money. You know, like I said, Pep Guardiola, uh, so far in all his managerial career, you know, he has spent, um, you know, over a billion pounds. But obviously, the vast uh, majority of that billion pounds has been uh, spent um, on that uh, Manchester City team. But Pep Guardiola is a really, really good manager, you know, reflecting on the trophies and that he's won. I think he's won 20-odd in his career. Um, you know, he hasn't only won trophies as a manager. You know, he also, you know, won uh, trophies um, as a player. But, you know, Pep Guardiola is emulating, you know, the football at Man City now, what he, you know, produced at Barcelona um, and Bayern Munich and that. Um, 
But yeah, you know, uh, you know, City are um, a very, very good team. But, you know, I'm su I've been surprised at them, you know, a little bit, you know, because um, I expected them, you know, to, you know, I've had a, I've had to have had a better start than this, you know, because they've already lost three games this season. I think they've drawn a couple of games, you know. They obviously lost to Norwich early on this season, which was a surprise, you know. They lost to... Um, uh, Wolves at home, which was also another surprise. You know, they got beat by Liverpool uh, recently. You know, they drew to Newcastle last weekend. You know, they did have a good win um, against uh, Burnley um, early on uh, this week and that. Uh, but, you know, I'm very sceptical, you know, to be quite sure, you know, that we're going to get out um, out of Man City. Um, I do um, expect us to lose uh, the game. But all it takes, you know, is one more defeat or even not a win. You know, then I think, you know, the pressure uh, will uh, mount up um, on a Ligon and Solskjaer. I think, you know, reflecting on that win against Tottenham, them on Wednesday, I think you know that a lot of pressure um, has um, eased off him, and that maybe not fully, but I've got to say, um, a lot of pressure um, has uh, eased off him. Um, but um, yeah, but look, City have got really, really good players, you know, they've also got some injuries I want to take into account as well. You know, I think they've got Aguero out with a thigh injury, um, obviously, they've got uh, Sane out till February, uh, they've also got um. Laporte out till February, but you know that's I think that's the only injuries they've got. But look at the other, they've got other good players. You've you know they've got the likes of Kyle Walker, very very good right back. You know they've got uh, Bernardo Silva, um, David Silva, you know Raheem Sterling, you know. Um, you know Kevin De Bruyne. You know, Gundogan, you know, Rahid Mahrez. So, Manchester City, um, I've got um, a lot of uh, good uh, players um, in their uh, team. Uh, but I think on the day, you know, we can, you know, we are definitely not capable um, of beating them. So, if we can put a good performance out, you know, I think, you know, we can definitely know uh, beat uh, Manchester City in that. But it would be fantastic if we did beat them. But even if we do beat Man City, you know, it isn't still going to change my perceptions regarding Solskjaer and that because, you know, like I said on my recent videos, one good result or a good couple of results doesn't uh, change uh, my perception uh, regarding uh, Solskjaer. I said, you know, maybe the only way my perception will change if we were to go on a good run until, you know, March or until the end of this season, then my perceptions, you know, may change then uh, regarding uh, Solskjaer and that. You know, I, I think maybe some Man United fans' perceptions would, would have changed regarding Solskjaer, reflecting on the win um, against Tottenham but I think you'll still get quite a lot of Man United fans you know still wanting him um, out um, of the football club definitely obviously you know you've got a lot of Man United fans uh, that are uh, demanding um, Richo uh, Pochettino in but there again there's been quite a few managers um, on our um, agenda who could uh, replace uh, Molly Guinness Solskjaer and that um, but I still feel as though he's not the right man uh, to elevate Man United forward um, obviously you know Solskjaer and Ed Woodward and that you know their perceptions are totally comparison to mine and a lot of Manchester United fans because Solskjaer you know believes he's the right manager Ed Woodward did came out recently and he said he's determined to stand by Solskjaer. Maybe if this bad run of form uh, does uh, continue to persist, then maybe, you know, he will uh, consider, you know, uh, sacking him. But, um, you know, we'll definitely, you know, uh, keep uh, Solskjaer uh, for uh, this uh, present uh, time. Uh, obviously, the players... Um, I've obviously not urged uh, my board as well uh, to uh, stick uh, with Solskjaer and that um, because a lot of our players, you know, still believe um, he's uh, the right uh, manager, you know, uh, to elevate uh, Manchester United uh, forward. But, you know, like I said, um, you know, um, I think, you know, you know, in, uh, in with the vast majority of our bad performances this season um, and our uh, bad uh, results, like I said, you know, Solskjaer um, is accountable uh, for some um, of that. But um, obviously, you know, not all uh, the blame uh, does uh, stem uh, from him. You know, I think you can also blame the board uh, because uh, the board um, have been um, a liability uh, for several years uh, with their uh, poor uh, recruitment and poor selection um, of managers, so they're definitely accountable. I mean, also, Ed Woodward uh, needs to get out of the football club, um, even though he did uh, recently assure uh, Glasgow signings um, at Man United. And I still believe there's definitely uh, more players that need to uh, leave uh, Man United. Um, definitely, I think we need to get rid of another four or five more players next year, you know, despite the fact uh, that a lot of players um, have left uh, since uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer's um, arrival. And... Um, like I said, you know, uh, recently, you know, Solskjaer has actually, you know, demanded the board 
and Ed Woodward uh, to get transfers uh, done uh, quickly um, because it is not long now anywhere um, until uh, the January transfer window uh, does um, open. Um, you know, we're already making plans for January. You know, we have got um, a lot of uh, players um, on our um, agenda who we could uh, go in for uh, next year and that. Um, I think Solskjaer's still keen on recruiting young players to the club uh, like he did do during the summer. And as it stands now at this present time, you know, we have got um, a lot of uh, young um, upcoming uh, players um, in the squad, definitely. And, um, you know, but I think it's very imperative next year that we do get the right calibre players to Manchester United. Um, and it's very imperative that we address uh, the deficiencies in the squad like I took into account. You know, next year we've got to get a couple of midfielders in. You know, we need an, attack we need an attacking midfielder. We also need a defensive midfielder. Uh, we've also got to, got to get a couple of attackers in. You know, someone that can score a goal, someone who can create chances in that. Uh, but we need to recruit a replacement for Romelu Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez because you can say since their departures, you know, departures, you know, we've looked uh, very um, exposed there in that um, attack of our line. So, um, yeah, and perhaps you can say uh, we need a um, right winner, um, you know, because we was in for a right winner uh, during uh, the summer. And there's possibly other areas in the squad as well uh, that uh, do uh, need to be um, addressed. But don't forget, um, recently Gary Neville came out and, you know, he said, um, you know, that, you know, Solskjaer needs to make at least um, two uh, signings um, in January. But you can still say um, he's still um, in the process of um, rebuilding uh, this Manchester United team. Because analysing uh, the vast uh, majority of this team, it isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. You know, uh, the vast uh, majority of these uh, players um, are Jose Mourinho's. You know, there's only three players there uh, that are Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's, you know, that I recommended into the club during the summer. You know, we spent nearly £150 million on Daniel James, Anne wan -Bissaka and on Harry uh, Maguire. And I've got to say, you know, they're not accountable for any of our bad performances this season because you can arguably say... Then, you know, the new signs have been um, our uh, best players without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, so I credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in that aspect, you know, he did recommend uh, three uh, good uh, players um, into the squad. But I think, you know, we need at least, like I said, five uh, to six uh, more uh, signings and that. But um, look, very, really looking forward uh, uh, to uh, the January uh, transfer win, definitely. Um, Really, really, I'm um, looking uh, forward to that um, as well for the uh, January uh, transfer uh, window. Um, but, um, yeah, so I think, you know, like I said to you, you know, there's some aspects of me you now that do credit Solskjaer and that, you know, like I said, he's got a lot of trustworthy him um, and his young upcoming players, you know, like I said. And when he initially did get recommended in, you know, he did assure anywhere, you know, that um, everybody uh, would uh, get uh, the chance and that. But like I said, the young players have been given their chances this season. You know, I can assure, you know, that some of the young upcoming players will become a success. You know, I think, you know, Mason Greenwood will become a success at the football club. By the time he's 23, 24, I think he will be a Galactico player. He scored four senior goals for the football club this season. This is actually his first season in the senior squad, but he's done really, really well. Um, Brandon Williams, you know, Solskjaer uh, does view Brandon Williams as his first choice left back now, uh, reflecting um, on his impressive uh, performances. Uh, we've got a variety of full backs anyway, you know, that can compete, as Solskjaer recently said. Uh, but I think Brandon Williams is a much better solution than Ashley Young um, and Luke Shaw, definitely. Um, to Anzebe, you know, I think he'll become a success. So too, I think, uh, will James Garner, because in the games James Garner's played in, he's also uh, been uh, very, very um, impressive. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we've got a lot of uh, young uh, players um, in the squad and that. Um, I think in games, some games this season as well, uh, we have showed uh, tactical flexibility in that. I thought Solskjaer, Tactically got it spot on um, against uh, Tottenham. Um, obviously, um, for the vast majority of this season, uh, Solskjaer um, has been uh, going uh, with that 4-2-3-1 formation. And we do know it ha that hasn't mainly been working out. Um, a couple of times, you know, Solskjaer's tried a few different formations. A couple of times he's gone, you know, with three at the back. Um, you know, he went with three at the back against, I think, Sheffield United. He went with three at the back against Liverpool. Um, also went with three at the back um, against Pies and Belgrade, um, away from home that was, um, and I think on the odd occasion um, he has gone uh, with a 4-3-3 and that, 
But for the vast majority of this seed, you know, you've got to say that Solskjaer um, has been uh, tactically uh, naive. So that's one element of concern I have got about him. Um, like I said, Solskjaer hasn't really got, um, you know, a, he hasn't got a good pedigree behind him, let's be honest. He hasn't really got any intuition on how to manage um, a big football club uh, like uh, Man United, despite the fact that he knows uh, the tradition, traditions um, of the football club. Um, and I think Solskjaer as a manager... He's totally comparison, you know, as he was um, as a player, because I thought he was a great player for us, and he was a fantastic uh, serving uh, for uh, the football club. So despite you know whether he's man whether he gets sat or whether he stays, you know, I will never ever you know forget uh, what he's uh, you know done uh, for uh, the football club, you know, Solskjaer and that. Um, but you know, I just don't think you know he's going to uh, succeed um, as a manager, and um, he has only been here nearly a year now. Um, you know, he has been permanent manager nearly for nearly nine months. And he can say um, he's enjoyed a difficult, uh, well, for the vast majority of the nine months or so, he's enjoyed um, a really uh, difficult uh, time. But I, know, I understand where people are coming, f coming from, you know, us getting rid of uh, Solskjaer now, you know, wouldn't really solve them um, a lot of uh, problems um, at the football club or probably wouldn't uh, solve them um, any uh, problems in that. Because um, I don't think there's only a change in management uh, needed at the football club, like I've said. I think we need to see um, a variety um, of changes, definitely. Um... But um yeah and um like I said we can't just keep persistently we can't keep persistently you know sacking managers you know because you know Solskjaer's our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era you know three managers have already been sacked from the football club since the uh, the Ferguson um, era you know like I said uh, Moyes got sacked um, after uh, what ten months um he had a really short tenure with the football club and that was one of the mistakes. That Ferguson made it was the only mistake uh, that Ferguson made at that point was recommending David Moyes in. Then, um, but David Moyes did enjoy a good long, you know, spell, you know, with Everton. You know, he did really, really well with them, but didn't replicate that at Man United. Van Gaal obviously got sacked as well after like a year, despite the fact he won the FA Cup. And then obviously we got Jose Mourinho win. You know, he enjoyed a two and a half year uh, tenure. Um, at the f what? Have you? Look what? At the email it's gone to her phone, hasn't it? Yeah. I've put. Oh. Hello, Demi Swinson. It's all done, Paul. You rang me Monday, told me to email documents to you, which I did do. Yeah. Then you told me after I had rang you on Wednesday that you were going to ring me at two p.m. that day. I have received no phone call up to now, Friday. You told me on Monday that I got job cleaner to start 11th of December at St Mary's Hospital late. So what I would like to ask you is why did you tell me I had the position once once documents were sent by email and I have heard nothing since? Mm. That's what I've sent. I'm just gonna, I bet I bet you haven't even replied. Like I was saying, yes, yeah, so, um, and then we got Mourinho win, you know, he enjoyed the two and a half year tenure um, at the football club and, um, you know, he won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season and that, but I did give the variety of reasons why it didn't work out um, on Jose Mourinho, maybe you could arguably say we should have got Jose Mourinho win um, at an earlier point, but maybe, well, that was one of the mistakes we did make, uh, getting uh, rid um, of Jose Mourinho, because, you know, I think prior to, you know, that three month period where when Solskjaer was the interim manager and uh, prior to the odd good couple of games we've had when he's been permanent manager, I haven't really seen any improvements um, under Solskjaer than what I saw under Mourinho, Van Gaal and of course uh, David Moyes. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, direct to the football, um, it's a shame that we didn't get a direct to the football in during the summer because I did pinpoint out uh, that's one of the structural changes uh, that we do uh, need to uh, see at um, the football club and during the summer, you know, there was quite a few former Manchester United players uh, linked over that director's role. Um, Van der Sar was recently, there was speculation about him, but he's uh, now um, out of um, the equation because, um, you know, he recently signed um, a contract term um, extension uh, with Ajax, you know. But, um, yeah, so like I said, guys, um, really, really uh, looking forward to the game um, against uh, Man City. Um, hopefully, you know, we can uh, win uh, the game and that. And it is half past five uh, tomorrow, just to remind you um, again. Uh, may do one more live video soon. If not, um, I will be uh, back on uh, tomorrow uh, with some more. Uh, 
But um, yeah. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, slides below on the channel. And um, if you do consider subscribing, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.